Hello and welcome to Bite Size MRCP, a manageable way to digest the things that you need to know for your MRCP exam. We are two junior doctors based in the UK who have passed all three parts of the MRCP within the last five years and want to help you do the same. We're not associated with any MRCP examination organizations and the materials covered are by no means an exhaustive list of what can come up in your exam and indeed are not intended to be used as medical advice. Please refer to your college of entry or your friendly supervisor for further questions regarding the exam and syllabus. If you like the sound of what you hear today and would like to join us for more bite-sized revision, give us a thumbs up and press the subscribe button. Now, without further ado, let's get into today's topic, which is an introduction to dermatology. So let's start by talking about skin structure. From a very basic standpoint, you have got three layers in the skin. These from outermost to innermost layer are epidermis, dermis, and subcutis. Starting with epidermis, this is the outermost layer and it's the largest organ in the body. Its principal cell is keratinocytes and in itself it's got four layers, including basal cell, stratum spinosum, stratum granulosum, stratum corneum. Moving on, you will reach the dermis, which lies beneath epidermis. It provides structural and nutritional support to the skin. Its principal cells are fibroblasts, which make collagen, elastin, and proteoglycans. It contains subcutaneous glands such as hair, apocrine, and eccrine glands. Moving on to subcutis, which is the innermost layer and contains adipose tissue, connective tissue, blood vessel, and nerves. Now let's talk about dermoepidermal junction, which separates the epidermis from dermis. And is particularly important because the abnormalities in this junction leads to quite a few blistering disorders of the skin that we will be talking about later. So this is just a schematic version of what we have already discussed, which is the layers of the skin, starting from the outermost layer, which is epidermis, to dermis, and then followed by subcutaneous layer. So now we're going to be talking about some of the terminology in dermatology. These are really important because not only they are really useful in real life when you are talking about patient, you're talking about their skin condition over the phone to the dermatologist, they would need to know exactly what distribution and what level of disease you're talking about. And it's really important, especially for your PACES examination, when you're describing something, you're describing it in a medical professional way as opposed to a generic way of describing any type of skin disease, a rash. So moving on, hopefully most of this is going to be revision for you guys because these are all covered in most medical schools curriculum. But we thought it's important to lay the ground as solid as possible in here to make sure that when we are using these vocabularies and terminology later in our other videos, you are familiar with these and you know what's going on. So first one is a macule. A macule is a flat lesion that is less than one centimeter. If it's more than one centimeter, it is called a patch and it leads to localized color change in the skin. A papule is a solid elevation of the skin, which is less than one centimeter in diameter. And if it's more than that, it's called a plaque, which is a plaque, which is a raised flat topped lesion more than one centimeter in diameter. Slide 12 is a nodule, which is a raised lesion with rounded surfaces, and it needs to be more than one centimeter in diameter. This is a vesicle, which is a fluid filled blister, and it's less than one centimeter in diameter. This is a bulla, which is again a fluid filled blister. However, this is more than one centimeter in diameter. This is a pustule, which basically means a pus filled lesion. These are wheels, which are raised compressible area of dermal edema. 
very frequently you would be getting this in conditions such as allergic reactions. This is a scale which is flaking of skin due to abnormal stratum corneum. This is a crust, which basically means dried pus, blood, or serum. Last but not least, it's important to talk about the skin types based on the Fitzpatrick scale. This is sometimes used to describe patients and is not too uncommon to appear on your MCQs. So the Fitzpatrick scale contains six different skin types, starting from one to six and starting from pale to dark brown or black skin. So your skin type one is the pale white skin, normally with blue or green eyes and blonde or red hair. What's important about this is to know about the burning and the tanning of these skin types. So skin type one always burns and does not tan. Moving up to skin type two, you have fair skin and frequently blue eyes. These type burns easily and tans poorly. Skin type 3 is normally darker, but still has white skin. They can tan, but they would initially normally burn. Skin type 4 is the light brown skin, which burns minimally, however tans easily. Skin type 5 is the brown skin, which rarely burns, but tans darkly quite easily. And finally, skin type 6 is your dark brown or black skin. These individuals never burn and always tan darkly. Thanks for listening to this episode of Bite Size MRCP. If you like what you heard today, give us a thumbs up and hit the like and subscribe button to make sure that you don't miss out on our next episode. Let us know in the comments which topics you would like to hear in the future. See you in the next episode.